scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Elohim Madonna. Badakato Salabrenda Skadalisha Hasada Brati Shila Barusa Zigate Barus Kalabrande Gabarus Yata Hashaladas Shadabas Sadabada Katabrandas Kadabarato Shadagate Badakato Shalaska Barusa Degate Barata Pratas Kadabarada Banada Katabrata Gadegate Bush Empretekate Barata Katabrata Katabaraka to Shadabranda Kasadadas Ekratusa Kabarusa Sekete Barata Pariata Kalata Prandas Katabariata Shibana Katabaraka Tabarusa Kabaska Kabalanda Sariata Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we pray and we cry tonight that you will grant us illumination, grant us power with God, let your word prevail over our flesh until Christ is enthroned set us on fire tonight and let Jesus himself be glorified hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Now, please listen. I'm going to be brief tonight, but I want you to be very sensitive. There is a very strong anointing in this place. Very strong anointing. I believe with all my heart that there are activations and there are impartations, transference of possibilities. That whilst you are listening, something is happening to your spirit, man. So we'll be very brief tonight, but don't be distracted. Don't just listen to hear. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. We live in a time where a generation is desperate to see the reality of the spirit like that it translates to become more than a sermon articulately communicated by an intelligent man of God. The world is not looking for historians. 
the world is not looking for orators necessarily there is a desperation I'm seeing the number 21 in the spirit and I'm seeing there is a fire and it's coming on 21 people right now as I'm speaking just sit down you don't have to stand please I wanted to bring them out here while I teach you will not be distracted 21 people I stretch my hands across the length and breadth of this place. May the angel of his presence among these 21 people ignite them. Please let the ushers bring them. Shala subriata. For others is the fire of evangelism coming upon your spirit man in an unusual way. Please just, if, if you have them, just you can just bring them while I teach. That fire of evangelism for others is the opening of prophetic portals. 21 people. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. And for others, you are drinking of ancient wells. There are generals that came from this city. And their mantles continue to hover around this city. Searching for vessels that are available. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit. Now, the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. See the rain of your love, we feel the wind of your spirit. Now, the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear. Listen to me. I want you to understand what the Spirit of God is doing. This is, this is not showmanship. It's a communication of a desperation of the Holy Spirit pressing into the earth to find vessels that can and will be able to back the revival that has been prophesied upon. It is not a sermon. It is not a doctrine. It is an experience of power. The faith life and the spirit life is beyond the teaching. There must be an experience, an attestation to the dealings of the spirit within a territory. is telling me that there is a move of God that is coming to this city there is a prophetic and an apostolic move of the spirit that is coming upon the land of Abelkuta it's the wind of the spirit that will begin to blow across the length and the breadth of this city pastors 
prophets, evangelists, apostles will begin to rise with such depth of power and fire. Men will begin to have encounters of the secret place. You will find people who will shut down on regular preaching and they will go on hiding for weeks and for months because they will come into a season of strange dealings with the Holy Spirit. You may think they are missing, but they are not missing. It's the experience of the cave of Adullam. God is going to begin to pick people one by one. It will not be a corporate thing. It will not even be about husband and wife or pastors and members. God will search for willing vessels. One by one, he will pick men and begin to train them and prune them and discipline them and then open their eyes to new dimensions in the spirit and then place new wine upon their lives they will come out like men of Issachar having an understanding of the times and knowing what Israel ought to do please be patient with me it's the spirit of revival it's the bad thing of something new and something prophetic upon your city one last prayer and then I get back to the world there are 11 people here there is the grace this move of the spirit that is coming you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in your visions and I know that many people will be part of it but I'm seeing 11 specific people men and women there is a strong fire that is coming upon them Lord where are they in this crowd from the front to the back this 11 oh God that you are consecrating in this season may that fire fall from heaven in the name of Jesus ignite them oh God like the forces of Samson ignite them oh God a burden of power a burden of fire a portion to them dimensions in the spirit a portion to them levels of grace illumination and power we shake up the fountains of this city we command you to deliver the mantles that are hiding we shake up the fountains of Abel Kuta deliver the mantles of the prophetic deliver the mantles of the apostolic that the labor of the fathers that have sojourned the soil of this territory will not be in vain. Spring up all wells. We call you by prophecy. Be sensitive. Hosea chapter 6. Listen it if you can. Pastor Shola, you see, what God is doing in this place this night is very prophetic. There is truly a birthing. I'm seeing a vision of a pregnant woman, and I'm seeing water just bursting. And when, when the water of a woman breaks, 
is a sign that something is about to be released this is what i'm seeing in my vision that for some of you the training is almost coming to an end your season 40 days coming to an end the season of appearing is almost opening up the days of fasting the days of discipline no one knows you yet you are still in the cave of adulam but there is there is a bad thing please hear what i'm saying i'm speaking by the spirit there are some is here you've not produced one song yet you have hundreds of them god has prohibited you and said these are songs of revival that the time will come when the nations will hear these songs there are some of you the anointing on your life can shake territories but god has not allowed you to honor one single ministration but i'm seeing a woman and her water is already putting i mean busting forth and the bible says as soon as zion travails that she puts forth her son please where you are pray in one minute lord what you are doing in my life for my generation do not stop do not stop do not stop the training do not let my tears prohibit what you are doing it may be a painful sacrifice but i open up my spirit please pray Hosea chapter 6 I'm not sure I may be able to share what I plan to share but wherever we can stop tonight there is a grace to just attend to serious issues here as I'm standing here pastor I'm seeing chains I'm seeing oppression I'm seeing all kinds of things and like we're sharing briefly with pastor I will never be the man of God who will come into a city and leave the chains of people on them no way it's impossible there has to be an evidence of the life the power the glory the effulgence of his grace so that you will go back with a conviction that you have not been taught cunningly devised fables Hosea chapter 6 please and verse 3 please sit down if you can mighty God it says and let us know let us follow on to Jehovah give us KJV if you can please thank you his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come to us as the rain he shall come to us but there is a revelation of himself that he would want us to see he will not come as he came yesterday he will come to us as the rain i want to talk very briefly on the rain a revelation that the Lord will have me share hallelujah now please listen as best as you can scripture reveals the Holy Spirit as one who manifests himself to man in different forms it is consistent with scripture and is consistent with god to manifest himself to man dimensionally and we see that in scripture the holy ghost manifests himself using several forms for instance he can manifest as fire 
for instance he can manifest as wine for instance he can manifest as oil for instance he can manifest as water and then we also see that he can manifest as rain please look up Hosea is prophesying to us that God wants to come to us he's talking about the move of God but he's saying that there is a pattern he has chosen to come through and he says he will come to us please give us the B part there that he will come to us as the rain he has chosen to reveal himself to a people and to a territory as the rain every time the Holy Spirit uses an emblem please look up to reveal himself to men these are tokens of revival these are tokens of the outpouring of the Spirit and it's important that we study why he chooses to assume those modes and those patterns because they sustain an understanding that will guide us on how to receive his ministry the way you receive fire is not the way you receive rain when rain is coming you put a bucket or you create a channel when fire is coming you don't put a bucket so the Holy Ghost reveals himself as several emblems and it's important that the saints sustain the intelligence to be able to understand how he reveals himself and how to receive of his unique ministry what is the rain a brief exhortation the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon people upon territories that is responsible for activating certain dimensions of spiritual possibilities now watch this every time fire is revealed fire comes to prune fire comes to purify are we together now fire comes to produce better versions of the same thing when you put your yam or you put whatever it is under fire the yam does not change to potato the potato does not change to rice it only changes to a form that is better for consumption so when the Holy Ghost reveals himself as fire there is what he seeks to do to burn off the flesh to cut off the excesses to break the stony heart to become the heart of flesh but when he comes as the rain every time the rain comes the rain comes in response to dryness the rain comes in response to barrenness Isaiah 32 and verse 15 until the spirit be poured upon us from on high in the similitude of a rain then he will turn a wilderness to a fruitful vine and then if a fruitful vine he turns it into a forest so when the Holy Spirit comes as the rain he comes to provoke to, to provoke a new dimension of possibilities that have not been seen he comes to bring abundance he comes to move people into realms of fruitfulness rain is responsible for fruitfulness hear me man of God because there is going to be a revelation now rain fire is not responsible for fruitfulness fire is responsible for productivity but rain is responsible for fruitfulness is there hope for a tree even if it be caught at the scent of water not fire so when the Holy Ghost wants to reveal himself as rain it then means that he must come to a region where there has been a prolonged season of barrenness dryness lack of fruitfulness listen very carefully 
and there are seven things that happen when the spirit of God is revealed in a territory as the rain I will list them very quickly and then we'll pray let it open the floodgates of heaven let it open listen when the Holy Spirit is revealed to a people a nation, a city, a territory as rain. He will begin to make the reality of certain experiences number one. Very quickly. I want to be as simple as possible because I want us to understand before we pray. Number one. The Holy Ghost manifesting as a rain. But increased dimensions of love for God and passion for spiritual things. Watch this. It is rain that makes the farmer suddenly become passionate about his farm. When there is no rain, it will look as if the farmer hates his farm. Yet, the farmer is in love with that farm. But the farmer waits for rain to prompt his passion. Every time rain begins to fall, the farmer's passion too begins to rise. It rises enough, he goes to get his seeds. He goes to get his hoe. He goes to get his tractor. And off he goes to the farm. Until the Holy Ghost comes as rain. It will be impossible for the saints. To sustain the kind of passion. And zeal. That it will take to love God. Listen very carefully. I come from the north. It's largely an agrarian area. And when it is dry season. You almost think the people do not do any other thing. They get up in the morning and can sit in front of their houses and gist and talk politics from morning till evening. But the moment the rain begins to come, when it comes once, twice, thrice, four times by morning, very early in the morning, the once lazy man, the once nonchalant man, suddenly becomes a diligent farmer. The rain does not speak, yet it attracts. It draws you from your house to the farm. Follow me carefully. So when the Holy Ghost comes upon a people as rain, he begins to stir up a passion. What is it about this book? I bought the book five years ago, but I've never had reason to read it. But when it comes upon you as the rain, you will go back home and search for that book as though an umbrella were coming to read it. The Holy Ghost as the rain is responsible for the refueling of passion. Refueling of passion. Hear me? There is a requisite level of passion and hunger it takes to be relevant in this season. You're not going to love God casually and do Christianity casually and preach casually. No, there is a depth of hunger. Please hear me. And it is not something you just assume. Hunger can be imparted in a man. When the Holy Ghost comes, did the Bible not say in Romans chapter 5 verse 5 that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts not by our intention, by the Holy Ghost. You know, people talk to me all the time and they say, Apostle, how come you love God and you are this passionate? It is the revelation of the Holy Ghost. Not just as fire, but as the rain. Fire does not sink into the earth. But when rain comes, it enters right to the root of the earth. And it draws something that was hiding in the earth to come out. The limit of fire is the surface. But rain goes down, right down. So when the Holy Ghost comes as rain, he penetrates your flesh. He, it looks like he's weak. But he will come in until he soaks in you a desire. A depth of hunger. And that's what God is doing in the life of somebody. 
planting a hunger that you will leave this meeting and say i'm not just a christian i am passionate and hungry for god it is your hunger that will drive you to the place of prayer it is your hunger that will drive you to the place of study that you can open your bible in the morning and lift your eyes and see that it's 10 p.m and you say my god what happened hunger hunger is a measure of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite the moment you lose appetite spiritually you need the rain there are times that patients will not eat food but no doctor will stop a patient from taking water because water represents life is, is God speaking to me? the refueling of hunger it's amazing how easy believers can lose their hunger it's amazing how easy preachers can lose their hunger and, and, and it's not something to be embarrassed about but when he comes as the rain suddenly your five hours prayer was reduced to 20 minutes you didn't even know when that decline started and then he comes as rain and one night you go to the place of prayer and come out the next day because rain came upon you someone prophesied say lord send the rain send the rain send the rain number two very quickly the holy ghost revealed as a ray brings forth unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom how many of you have driven your cars and then wind makes your vision hazy even though you have light sometimes your windscreen is hazy and you will not just need a wiper you will also need water to clarify your vision the rain comes to take away the haziness in your spiritual understanding son of man what seest thou he says an almond tree he said you have seen correctly that means men can see but it does not mean what they saw was correct the holy ghost revealed as rain will grant you unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom deuteronomy chapter 32 let's look at three scriptures very quickly from verse 1 and 2 deuteronomy chapter 32 give ear O ye heavens and i will speak and hear O earth the words of my mouth he says my doctrine shall drop as what my doctrine i will communicate a body of light to you but it will come in the similitude of rain and my speech shall distill as the dew and as small rain drops upon a tender herb and as showers upon the grass the spirit of revelation coming as the rain God granting you access, clarity that you are no longer speaking opinions you are speaking with authority Luke chapter 4 Luke chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4 Dr. Luke was speaking and he was speaking to Theophilus and he was saying for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely there are things that are most surely believed there are things that are vaguely believed but others are certainly believed even as they delivered them unto us which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word verse 3 it seemed good to me also having what perfect understanding not vague understanding not an opinionated understanding a man can have perfect understanding of all things so you are writing from a standpoint of conviction you are teaching from a standpoint of conviction you are not hoping you are right not that you prepare a sermon write a book then go back and hope you were right there is an outpouring that can open your eyes to perfect understanding verse 4 says 
so that you will know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed so that when you are given an instruction that faith works you don't just hope because the pastor said this and i respect the pastor there is a depth of conviction that produces persuasion number three oh, let me give us one more scripture first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 10 i'm being as simple as possible when you read verse 9 the bible says as it is written no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the comprehension of any man the things that god had prepared for them that love him verse 10 says but god had revealed them unto us by what his spirit the bible says for the spirit searches all things yea the deep things of god so the man if the revelatory ministry of the spirit comes in the similitude of the rain like a man driving in, in the night and driving in a dusty and a hazy weather he comes as that rain that grants you perfect understanding you can know that this is the key to the door you can know that this is the key to church growth you can know that this is the key to increase you can know that this is the key to favor you are not hoping my brothers and my sisters it is my prayer that god will bring believers as individuals and territorially speaking to a level of confidence where we do not just believe god vaguely but we would have tasted and seen that his word is dependable you can know the mysteries that are responsible for the various outcomes you desire walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost i am favor i am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the holy ghost that you know what to do in the spirit that is responsible for speed when someone comes to your life and say man of god i have suffered delay you don't just say let's pray you know what to do you know that there is an allocation in the economy of god where men can regain time and that is what you administer to that person you don't just say let's pray father help this man to be fast in life amen you are not effective when the holy ghost comes as rain the veil is taken from off our eyes we administer the mysteries of the kingdom with mastery with with the showmanship of an artist this is how to be a blessing so when you come to me and say apostle i have been plagued by witchcraft in my life i've not been able to move for 30 years no one has risen in our life i don't just say let's pray oh god have mercy that's a careless immature gap full spiritual life there must be a level of quintessence and accuracy in administering life please look at me believers we are only blessings to the degree to which we have thorough understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom so we know what mystery is responsible for what outcome we stop guessing and hoping that this will be right if this person comes and says i'm suffering from a health condition and it is a death sentence what do i tell that person oh go and read your bible god can heal god can bless but the jesus said the kingdom has come the reality that seems far i have brought it to your domain it is now something that you should not only hope and believe but you should now taste and see listen until the word becomes flesh it will not dwell among us and will not be able to behold the glory i am very passionate about studying the systems and the mysteries of the kingdom 
I want to know what is responsible for what. I'll give you an instance. Come, sir. Are you getting blessed tonight? Now, watch this. Let's assume that this brother comes to me and says, Apostle, I sense that I've been under an attack. I don't know if it's a curse. I don't know if it's a yoke. Nobody in our family can rise. Nobody in our family can, you know, make progress. While all graduates, no one is doing well. The ladies married, no children. Now, imagine this kind of scenario. And he comes to me believing that I am a representative of the government of heaven. I have so advocated it. By carrying a name and carrying a title that is implicating. Now he comes to me as the closest representation of the Christ. It is up to me now to take advantage of the Holy Spirit. The ministry of the Holy Spirit as the reign. Having perfect understanding. Now this man can come crying. He is representing 30 years of sorrow. And yet I have advocated that God can do it. Now the kingdom is under pressure to be made manifest. I can casually pray for him. And say my brother in the name of Jesus. I bind that spirit. I pray for you. He can even fall down while I'm praying. And stand up. And walk back into the same situation. Nothing changing. Not, it's as if the demons did not even have regard. For the name that was called. Because the name of Jesus is not a charm. There is a mystery behind it that makes it work. But I can come as a representative of the government of heaven and look at him and say, my brother, I congratulate you for paying the price to come to this ground. You have finished your past. Now you sit back and watch the invincibility of the power of this kingdom we represent. And in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, 30 years comes under the jurisdiction of the Lordship of the Christ. And it's torn completely. A wilderness. This gentleman goes back. Before getting home. And a lot comes of a job he did not ap ap apply for. And he hears that two of his sisters. Are already pregnant. And then. Fresh fire for God comes in. Now this is the kingdom coming. There is no message that is more powerful than that experience. When the family now gathers, their testimonies are proof that the power of God has been made visible. Let me tell you, the world that we live in now is tired of stories. They want to see a manifestation of the power of God. It, I will continue to study the Bible, but will my family situation remain like this? I'm tired of the theory of the God who can do, can bless, can heal, can live. Where is that God that he will not show up? He says, do not say I will go to heaven to look for him. Romans chapter 10. He says, the word is nigh to you. He has come near. The logos of God is near you. Are you getting blessed? What is the implication of the Holy Spirit coming as rain? Number three. The Holy Spirit being manifest among the people as rain brings about multiplied dimensions of spiritual power, multiplied dimensions of grace, unction, anointing. Joel chapter 2, we we'll read from verse 28 that when the Holy Ghost comes as rain, Pali Barus he brings about a multiplication of the possibilities of the kingdom. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour like water is being poured. My spirit upon all flesh as a result. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. We are reading to 32 the last verse. And also upon my servants and upon my handmaids. In those days, I will pour out my spirit. Uh -huh. And I will show wonders. The dimension of the Holy Ghost responsible for wonders is the Holy Ghost coming as rain. Rain. The same way when it rains, pastor, sometimes you can see physical ice dropping. 
and you are watching from your window with wonder sometimes when it's raining you see that it can become a flood and take even buildings the sheer power and the energy exerted when you see that the bible says wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood fires and pillars of smoke two more verses it says the sun shall be turned to darkness the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the lord shall come 32 and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls upon the name of the lord shall be delivered for in mount zion and in jerusalem shall be delivered and the lord had said and in the remnant whom the lord shall call deliverance in zion wonders in the heavens as a result of the outpouring of the spirit please listen to me i pray that you observe what pastor shola said before i came up that the challenges of today cannot be solved by yesterday's anointing believe me it is true anointing works like money one thousand may do you well to buy you a meal but one thousand will not pay for rent so if your challenge is thirst you are fine but if your challenge is housing you will need more than that the kind of unique expression of darkness that is in our world today requires certain high level dimensions of graces i can tell you this as a man of god you will be confronted with situations that even though you have gained some level of maturity in christ it will shake your faith and you say i've not seen it in this fashion before levels unique expressions of oppression I was told about a preacher who finished preaching a nice message powerful message on stage and fell down there right before everybody had died very powerful message what is worse than a man dying in the presence of God do you know how that would discourage the faith of many people now, you cannot say the man does not love God this man finished preaching a powerful message and died there so hell is reinventing its strategies hell wants to make sure that one event can discourage as many people the devil does not just want to manufacture events he wants to brand it with such darkness that with one event it would take a year's evangelism to recover those people so we also need to rise to dimensions of grace where one spectacular operation of the spirit like what will happen to someone tonight will be a testimony that for one year it will keep saving souls one year one year you will be you will be sharing it every day and yet people will not be tired is it not the resurrection of jesus that we've been sharing since we were born until today is still fresh because no one else could bring himself back to life there are dimensions of the move of the spirit that will happen in this day and age Please hear me and I pray that it happens through your hands. Bible history has it. St. Patrick, one of the great men that God used. True story that there was a man who had been dead for a long time. I think over six months or so. And believers got a hold of a dimension of the word of God. And they got angry. They went to a grave with someone that had died become bones become all of that and they were praying and they got angry because they felt from the revelation god gave them that the man dead did not finish his assignment and it was said that saint patrick came and took a stone and wrote his signature and said they should dig they brought the man out bones that had ezekiel 37 said son of man can this bone it was not a parable there were realities in the realm of the spirit body of christ we must step up our trust in god otherwise we ourselves will start fighting what god is doing because you will be too high for our level of faith to receive There were times that God worked certain spectacular miracles and even among the people they doubted what is all this? The 
the spirit of God who can make a virgin without a man conceive a child who can make two children to be talking while before they were they are born please do not downplay the power of the Holy Ghost as praying he's coming upon people to turn ordinary people is he not the one that turned the generals the ones we so talked about they were ordinary men but they stood before that rain it is raining all around me I can hear I was in a meeting and the person who wrote this song was giving the testimony of how the song came about and he said it was at a time where they were in a moment of prayer trusting God for revival they were praying and praying and praying and suddenly the song came as a token of God's answer to say that write this and be sure the rain is coming There's going to be a great awakening. There's going to be a great revival in our land. There's going to be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus. Let me give us one more. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit as the rain brings about unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity, abundance, and fruitfulness. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. From verse 24 and then we'll read 26. Joel chapter 2. An unusual outpouring. Let's start from 23. 23 says, please give it to us from 23. It says, Be glad, ye children, and so on and so forth, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come for you the rain, the former and the latter rain in our first month. 24. It says, And the floors shall be full of wheat. So the rain will not only affect sons and daughters. The rain will not, in fact, when you read the sequence, is that the floors were first affected before the men. The men started in verse 28. It says, the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Uh -huh. And I will restore to you the years, and so on and so forth, 26. And ye shall eat in plenty, and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Please look up. I hope you realize by now that every time we talk about wealth and prosperity and abundance, we are speaking from a kingdom perspective. It will be unfortunate if there are still believers now who are yet to reconcile the role that kingdom wealth and prosperity has to play, has always played. And will continue to play in the revelation of the Christ upon the earth. When we talk about wealth and prosperity and abundance as kingdom people, it's beyond just buying clothes and buying cars. That the name of the Lord is heavy to take resources to keep it lifted. And we must lift it high enough for the nations to see that Christ has been exalted and he's been made both Lord and Christ. And it will require resources the lie of the devil many times and this has eaten into the church is that wealth and abundance does not have any active role the reason is because we look at it from a selfish perspective I can choose to live a mediocre life not needing resources for anything that's all right but when you talk about kingdom come you will need resources 
this program was put up not just because of the availability of intention and hands but only God can tell the amount of resources was it not Satan that paid people to say Jesus is not alive he paid he's still paying today but there is a generation that will receive that investment of the spirit and come with resources resources with intention not just carnality and 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 showing that you have money jesus you believe that's what we'll do with resources from the north to the south the east to the west jesus you It's a terrible thing to go to the secret place and be thinking about money. It's distracting. It's a terrible thing for your pulpit to become a center for talking about money every service. But people will have to resort to doing that if there is no economic advantage that comes from the intelligence of the spirit. So when he comes, he will bring to us a blueprint. Was it not the spirit of God that showed Joseph the formula? that made for survival in the seven years of famine. Joseph did not just see it by intellectual prowess. It came to him by the spirit. And in these days, there are financial apostles that are rising once again. Listen to me. I have seen it. I've thought on it. That individuals who will build churches and say, don't even announce it. Man of God, what is your budget for this year, for next year? This is it. Focus on the ministry of prayer and the word. Not discussions and not arguments about money. That you would not just draw a lady and say stop prostitution. But you say stop prostitution. But I fix your life in a way and a manner that will make prostitution look like an insult to your life. We are called out of into we are not called out of and left there. The economy of God calls men out of a system into another system. But it must be economically prepared. Are we blessed? I made up my mind, Pastor, and, and, and I've shared this with you, that I will never pastor a people. It is true that the signature grace and the anointing and the call is that which inspires people into intimacy with the Holy Spirit and opens them up to the revelation of the mysteries of the kingdom and then allows people to experience the supernatural workings of God. This is what he is committed to us and will remain faithful. But in addition to that, I will never pastor a people who only love God and are passionate, carrying the anointing and are economically depraved. I would have wasted their time. The plague of poverty will erode the sacrifices. All of the sacrifice of godliness will almost be tortured to death. Do not downplay the role that poverty and hardship will play in strangling your spiritual life. Are we together? There are people who have doubled into things they should not have. Not because they do not know the pressure of finances. There is, there is a real financial renaissance that is coming to the body of Christ. What we have seen now that we celebrate as the Lord has shown me and supported by scripture is only trickles, tests of faithfulness to see if we are qualified. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. 
there are men who will be committed the wealth of nations in the hands of individual are we blessed I have to pray for us but let me see if I can just run the other two quickly number five the Holy Spirit being revealed as a rain means supernatural dimensions of wealth okay let me give you scriptures wealth prosperity and abundance Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 4 please write it quickly so that we'll just go straight into the prayer and I just speak over your life and we're done Leviticus chapter 26 and 26 and verse 4 Leviticus 26 and verse 4 then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase oh it's gone and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit they will only yield at the instance of the rain hallelujah so when rain comes upon you it brings forth abundance Deuteronomy 11 and verse 14 Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14 I give you this scripture so that your faith will not be founded upon the wisdom of men it says I will give you the rain of your land in its due season the first rain and the latter rain that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thy oil it's amazing that wine and oil too depend on rain hallelujah next number five now supernatural restoration when the holy ghost is poured up upon a people as rain it brings about supernatural restoration spiritual restoration material restoration joel chapter 2 and verse 25 just write it down it says i will restore to you the years let me tell you when the holy ghost comes he can bring restoration yes sir how many people lose their crops and lose maybe their shops are boggled and their grains are stolen and they look forward to the rainy season as a consolation when the rainy season comes they go to sow again because they know that God can use that rainy season to bring them a restoration of that which was lost number six now this is interesting when the Holy Ghost comes upon a man and individuals as rain it brings judgment upon people territories and nations that oppose God's agenda Genesis chapter 7 and verse 4 this is a dimension of the rain that now will is an interesting dimension that the rain is not only just pleasant the rain can also be destructive and it says for yet seven days I will yet cause it to rain upon the earth. This is Noah. 40 days and 40 nights. And every living substance that I have made, I will destroy from off the face of the earth. Now, look at this. The reign of God has a judgment dimension. Not to you. It shows you all of these things I've listed. But then it now turns and the Holy Ghost can bring havoc and judgment to everything that is antichrist in a man's life. The rain. Many of us have seen the same rain we talk about that make plants to come out. The same rain can sweep buildings. The same rain can capsize ships that carry cars. Rain is not only a blessing. Rain can be dangerous. So judgment upon the people. When rain came in the days of Noah, it was lifting Noah and the animals higher and it was bringing every other person down. Simultaneously, at the same time, a few people were rising from that flood, but others were going down. And it took them and dropped them upon a rock called Mount Ararat. And every other thing that was not in that boat died let me tell you this very soon god is about to speak in this nation and across africa when god is silent 
understand that his silence is a language there are times that god allows the boast of men to reach his zenith and then he now echoes from heaven and says who is that man who did not create the heavens and the earth and yet makes a boast as though we did it together listen to me rain can make a statement when there is serious rain it comes with thunder it doesn't come alone you may not hear the sound of the rain but thunder always follows a serious rain and sometimes that thunder can strike once and produce havoc are we together the bible says why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that the kings of the earth they set up themselves against god that is anointed so that they will you know wage destruction he said but god shall laugh from his throne and then in his derision he will speak god is about to make a statement upon the earth kings have risen in their arrogance and have attempted to take the place of god and for a long time he would keep quiet but then when he watches the pride and the folly of men in his majesty he will echo once and recycle obedience and honor and allow another rebellion to rise again the god of heaven is not threatened by the foolishness of men let me tell you this the god of the universe was not voted into power his very throne is like a law court righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne he does not just sit as king he sits also as a judge and he can send rain the bible tells us in exodus chapter 9 and verse 23 please give us exodus chapter 9 and verse 23 it says and moses this was the judgment in egypt and moses stretched forth his rod towards heaven and the lord sent what thunder and hail and fire ran along upon the ground and the lord rained hail upon the land of egypt god can rain rain doesn't always have to be water but it can be rain god can rain down words God can rain down judgment. The same water that was parted, heat and tether, was the same water that provided the moisture that put down the chariots of Pharaoh. The moisture that refused to allow, they were moving on dry ground. Suddenly when Pharaoh came with his chariots, according to the song of Miriam, God made moisture to now cause the tires to begin to misbehave. I will sing unto the Lord, for he have triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. You will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. On one side, God is lifting you. On another side, God is shutting the mouth of those who say, can God help people in this family? Happening at the same time. Listen, fear a man who God has invested his jealousy in. You will be talking and God will allow you to finish running your mouth. Then God will carefully honor the person in your presence. Ask her man. What shall be done to a man who has done this? And her man thought it was him. So he made the best choice. And he said immediately, go and do so to Mordecai. Move with the chariot you desired and shout to everybody, bow the knee, that this is what should be done with a man who finds favor with the king. Let me speak over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, I prophesy to you that from tonight, that everything that should work in your to your disadvantage i overturn i overturn and i turn it to your favor in the name of jesus christ please sit down when her man went home and told his wife the tragic story she only asked him one question she said who is this man and he said mordecai the jew he said you are finished you fought a covenant not a man that means this is not even all there is more to come 
Listen, there are men who God will insist until they rise because he will remember the covenant and the vow of his mercy. He will remember that you served in this conference. He will remember that you swept the altar. He will remember you sowed your seed and he will send that rain. It is true. Let me stop here. What does it take to experience the rain? Let me give you three keys quickly. Number one, the first requirement to experience the manifestation of the Holy Ghost as the rain is genuine hunger for more of God. Isaiah 44 and verse 3. Please give it to us very quickly. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. It says, for I will pour water, not on him that is full, on him that is thirsty, and floods upon dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. Requirement number one, hunger. Genuine hunger. Lord, I desire to see your glory. I desire to see the rain come upon my life. And let me tell you, if there are people who are hungry tonight, then I assure you, you are not going back home the same. Number two, what does it take to experience the rain? A determination to see his kingdom come in your life, across lives, and across territories. Reminds me of the passion of Pastor Shola, Pastor Shegu, and all the pastors that have put this meeting together. Why would they leave their various churches in the comfort of what God is doing in their lives and then stand in partnership with all the servants of God in this city who have their own work and they are thriving and doing well to come together and call for a convergence. It is a desire to see his kingdom come. Psalm 63. It says, O oh Lord my God. Psalm 63. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longeth for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Verse 2 says to see your power and your glory. As I have seen in the sanctuary. You must have a determination. A determination. Lord, I'm tired of seeing sick people go back sick. I'm tired of seeing oppressed people. I'm tired of sharing the grace. And watching people go back the way they came as a man of God the Holy Ghost is attracted to not only your hunger but your desire not to make a name your desire not for fame not to be called apostle and prophet and all of these things let me tell you the truth God sees my heart and your spiritual people it is never my desire for fame to make a name you know thank god for all the clap and all these things you do for me but sometimes i just come and sit down and i just say thank god for it and my mind is completely not there all i want to see is the reality of christ revealed in the lives of people i want to see them stand from wheelchairs i want to see the dead come back to life i want to see age-long captivities go down i want to see territories bow to the lordship of christ that's my passion that's my obsession that's what I live for. That's what I will die for if need be. If all you want is power, you will not get it. Let me just tell you up front. If all you want is to use God to be famous, um, you may not do business with God in this season. God is looking for people who are not afraid of standing behind the cross to say if he's the one who is seen, no problem just use me oh god that's all i want if nobody knows me no problem apostle joshua selman is not as important as the mighty hand of god that will come and bless people if you are not ashamed of decreasing so that you will increase it's been my prayer every time as the world celebrates me and celebrate what god is doing in my life i'm humbled but it's a difficult thing to be me because on one side there are claps that can throw you to your grave 
but on another side there is a higher call and God is saying compared to where you need to go you are just one step out of the cave do not be distracted my dear son there are still lands to conquer there are still dimensions as far as I'm concerned what we are doing now is industrial attachment we will soon start when he's done with us furnished by the hand of God thoroughly worked upon by the spirit all the areas that kill the fathers and the patriarchs God is revealing it to us and building a fortification in us if pride killed them he's teaching us something about pride now if loss killed them he's teaching us something about loss now so that when we come out we're a formidable army that what threw them down is what we climb upon because we have we have climbed their shoulders and received the intelligence that makes for sustenance at the end of it christ be revealed in and through our lives listen you must be desperate to see christ revealed i didn't just step into the realm of seeing visions and seeing you know things about people honestly it was never my desire to access any prophetic grace all i wanted was god is there a more effective way to help me in administering your power and your glory to people that was it i was not looking for oh god give me power so that i can see and call names and no, 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 no. see when your desire becomes oh god why is this church seven months and it's not completed what does it take to complete it you are calling the economy the hand of god that prospers you don't call these spiritual things by just calling them you call them by calling what you would do with them why do you want the anointing why do you want the grace why do you want the faith why do you want to speak and things begin to happen if you've suffered a psychological breakdown growing up, what you need is a revelation of the word, not ministry. But I vowed and I've made my commitment under God that forever my life and my desire, purified by my hunger for God, that I will continue to serve Him and I will continue to desire that His glory comes. Do you know I made up my mind? pastor sir and i made a commitment that if i ever meet a man like i have the opportunity to meet you and you go back the same i don't deserve to see you again if you have to meet me twice to be blessed then god should use someone else to bless you because it's proof that i'm wasting your time it's the pressure that you put on yourself to be effective Jesus met people once and their life changed. Imagine how many times we have met people and told them change is coming. <laughs> no, sir. Hunger. That everywhere you are, God is in experience and the reality of his person can be proven here and now. Burdens lifted. Lives changed hunger provoked in people the tokens that follow his presence follow you like a shadow as proof that he is with you and you are with him and then number three what does it take to experience the move of the spirit as the rain prayer desperate heart cry desperate prayer psalm 64 from verse 1 and 3 1 to 3 psalm 64 hear my voice oh god in my prayer preserve my life from the fear of the enemy we're reading to verse 3 hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity verse 3 it says who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words that can be said. Zechariah chapter 10 and verse 1. 
and then we'll look at James chapter 5. Now, these two scriptures are very, very instructive. He said, Zechariah 10 and verse 1, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of rain, so the Lord shall make bright clouds and give you showers of rain. He said, Ask ye of the Lord rain. When you discern it is the time of rain, I'm hurrying up. J James chapter 5, we'll read from verse 16 to 18. The Bible is teaching us about prayer. James chapter 5, the 16, the B part says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man have been it much. Then he now uses Elijah to personify the ministry of prayer and how that ministry, prayer can send rain and it can shut rain. He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth for a space of six years. I mean, three years and six months. Uh-huh, 18. And he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain. Stop. When you pray, the heaven can give rain. When you pray, the heaven can give rain. You can pray yourself into a rainy season. You can pray out dry season from your life. You don't have to wait until it comes because it does not work the way it works agriculturally speaking. You pray and change seasons in your life. Lord, I'm tired of this barrenness as a man of God. I tell people you are blessed, they are not blessed. I tell people you are lifted, they are not lifted. I prophesy and everything I said was wrong. I'm tired of this haziness. Send me rain. Send rain from heaven. And you begin to pray and let me tell you this prayer truly brings rain and when it brings that rain it will drench you in a way and manner you see the thing with rain is it's impossible fire can burn your hand and i may not know but it's impossible for rain to come on you and nobody knows even if you have an umbrella it will show you. the holy ghost has rain there is no flood until there is rain. The wilderness does not produce flood. It is rain. The Lord wants to reveal himself. Please hear me, Abel Kuta. And hear me, dear precious people of God. There are dimensions of the Holy Spirit that he wants to bring in our lives. Captured as the rain. And in the next few minutes that we have to pray, I want you to be desperate that everything the rain can wash must be washed away from my life you don't wash clothes with oil hello please look up you do not wash clothes with oil you don't wash clothes with fire you wash clothes with water when water comes it also means you can purify you can bring a newer version of that cloth where it was stained yesterday with the ministry of water you no longer may see the stain again the rain is about to come and erode certain things from your life and bring in other new ones that's what God wants to do right now You've taken the pain and the sorrow away You've given me peace on denial There's no need to cry cause you're always with me You're my father, my everything Oh man, my The rain Lord, you took my pain away And then you gave me joy You're my peace, my melody In the center of the storm You gave me a brand new song To sing to you That's why I will lift up Pose and sing
and wash away the memory of yesterday you are here and the devil continues to haunt you yes i know that last year you were not serious with god yes i know that even before you came here your life may not be the best representation but the beauty of rain is that it can wash away the old he said remember not the former things nor consider the things that are before i behold i do a new thing lift your voice in one minute send the rain oh god send the rain oh god let that rain bring abundance let that rain restore my hunger Shela parato satikata. Abel put a cry for the rain. Let it come in ministry. Let it come in business. Shela parato siyakata barada. Please pray. for you it is impossible to come for a conference like this a representation of the passion of the body of Christ and then go back the same did the Bible not say now the Lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty I'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I'm under the shadow of I want you to be very sensitive it's a few minutes we still have a session tomorrow but I want you to believe believe that God is able to open up the gates 
and to bring your life into a new dimension that you will not have to go and tell people that I came for a Belkuta Believers Conference there will be an evidence Moses didn't tell anyone he met God there was an illumination a token of God's presence Haya, haya, hey. It's my prophecy to you tonight. For you now listen please i always pray this prayer not because i want to do it it's the spirit of the living god i want to speak restoration and speed i'm seeing the number 17 and when i pray please bring them out right now in the name of jesus the hand of god will come upon them and they will begin to run physically please help them so they don't injure themselves i declare by the spirit of god for every moment of delay I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. I declare speed. Receive speed now. Receive speed, Abel Kuta. Speed, Kabaruta Shalata. Break it, take it up. Bring them out. No more delay. I prophesy speed. I bring you into a season by the Holy Ghost. Speed in ministry by the Holy Ghost. From the front to the back I release that grace as that anointing comes on you every delay I don't care how long it has been I release you step into that grace Abel could I bring you the ministry of the Holy Ghost speed in your academics speed in ministry speak as you are standing here i speak to your family using you as a point of contact receive speed receive speed no delay i bring it to an end no delay i bring it to a close the Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. How could you be the same? How could you go back the same? Now listen. I told you that when I was ministering initially before I started teaching, I saw chains. And everywhere, listen to me, listen to me. The Bible says, the messianic prophecy says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. It says, for he hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. It says, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to open up prison doors. They are not parables. Now, I want to pray for you. Listen. I don't know how we're going to do it but you have to be careful now because once I begin to minister deliverance as all these spirits begin to leave sometimes the people can be wild so you just help and manage them let me pray for you many of you may not know that there are demonical influences that are at the back of the patterns of tragedy that before people listen 
it is not just because words are spoken that you are free every challenge is at the mercy of the grace that confronts it I want to pray for you now from the front to the back now at the count of three I want you to shout the name Jesus listen as you shout that name the rain as fire will come upon individuals and hear me except God is not God if there is any altar any yoke any enchantment over any family it comes to an end are you ready at the count of three I speak to every yoke every spirit the spirit of liberty is here at the count of three one two three shout Jesus I command powers I command yokes go now go now go now I command principalities release God's people release their destinies take it take it take it take it take it take it please help them at the back help them at the back every power every yoke every enchantment that is not of the Christ I release you from it now release their destinies release their families in the mighty name of Jesus hear me you are still going to shout that name again I'm seeing the hands of people it's a symbol of your productivity you walk but nothing walks you move but nothing moves some of you should not be where you are now but I want to speak over your life father that everyone under the sound of my voice as they shout that name Jesus the name exalted above every other name if there be anything that withholds their destinies Lord let it give way right now some of you will feel physical fire upon your hands and feet are you ready now at the count of three one two three Chains be broken. As a token for your commitment tonight I declare upon you return with strange testimonies tomorrow <laughs> believe it in the name of Jesus some of you tonight as you return back home the visions and the dreams that once used to come to you that now has disappeared I prophesy a restoration of them I open you up to the ministry of angels in a fresh dimension in the name of Jesus I pray for you some of you what you are looking for you will go and find it waiting for you at home in the name of Jesus dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it, 
see you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.